Good morning everyone, it's Mark Weens with Migrationology.com and EatingThaiFood.com in Bangkok, Thailand. It is a very hot and sunny morning and we are at the bus stop. We are gonna catch the bus back into Bangrak around Sapan Taksin and we are gonna start this mid-morning with what is hopefully a delicious meal. We made it to the restaurant, this place in Thai, it's called Ranahan Musalim. And so in English, that's just straight up Muslim restaurant. And they serve halal food. This restaurant is legendary. It has been serving halal food in this area or in the same location for over 70 years. So they have well withstood the test of time. And I love how classic this is, the wooden booths. And then they do have some metal tables in the center, but gotta choose the wooden booth. This is just a classic, legendary place. And also, I should just mention that Bangrak is a really multicultural area. And so there is a big population of Indian and um, there is a big population of Chinese and Thai and everything is kind of mingled in Bangrak, making it one of the, the most diverse areas and old areas of Bangkok with a really good mixture of food as well. Starting off, we got a roti mataba with chicken in it and this, you can see it is a roti, a stuffed roti, and there's chicken, and there should be egg and spices in here, and it's looking very nice. Let me add a little bit of this pickle um, and put it on, and I'm going, for a, I'm going for a centerpiece first. Oh yeah. Oh yeah, that tastes like curry scrambled eggs within a roti, which is, the roti is a little bit gooey and a little bit crispy at the same time. That is delicious. And it would go really well with a, a cup of tea, which I happen to have right here. This is a dish called kuruma kai, a chicken curry, and nice and yellow in color. There is a little bit of oil floating on top of there, but it looks extremely flavorful. And yeah, look at that, that curry. There's a tomato over here, which I will take as well. Let me put this onto my rice. And a little, a little more of that sauce would be a good idea. And oh, 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 I'm getting that tomato too in this bite. It is a little mild, but really well balanced and I like having that tomato in that bite to give it some a little acidity and that sourish tomato flavor. I'm gonna go in for one more bite. Oh, that is very good though. This dish is soup nua, which is a beef soup, and there should be beef. Oh, oh, that looks very tender. There are shallots and there is tomatoes in here. There are chilies and what else is in here? Uh, oftentimes there's some crispy shallots in here, but not sure. Let me taste a piece of that. Let me taste a piece of that beef and gotta get a chili in there as well. Or a, okay. Mm. Oh, that almost tastes like, like roast beef, but then wrapped up in a broth that is sour Slightly beefy, but not, not too beefy, and not too oily. And then you can also really taste the onions in there, as well as that, that chili gave it a nice kick, that's for sure. Mm. Oh, that is nice and sour. And the other dish I got is kamok pe, which is goat biryani. And the rice is orange and yellow, and then the piece of goat, oh, here it is, submerged below the rice there. Oh, that's a nice little hunk of meat there. And it's served with a Thai like mint and cilantro sauce as well as some curry sauce on the side as well. But I gotta taste it. Let me taste it first with nothing, no sauce. Oh, look at the tenderness of that meat. Oh, oh, that just slides right off there. Okay, taste a little bit, okay. That meat is ridiculously tender and then it has a really nice um, cardamom. I think that's what I'm tasting is cardamom and maybe some cloves in there as well. 
this looks like a looks like is that I think eggplant eggplant and a curry sauce let me add some of this this time put it onto my rice and then I might just add a little bit of this sauce as well which should be a slightly sour and sweet mint sauce okay that's about That almost tastes like lamb and mint sauce, but with a lot of cardamom and extra spices in there. Mmm, that's good. And then that curry is has a very pleasant curry powder flavor to it. Let me just taste a little bit of that curry. Really good. It has a nice uh, aromatic spice blend. And then that eggplant just kind of makes it kind of creamy because it's really really cooked very softly and so it just kind of sort of disintegrates into that into that gravy curry sauce um, yeah the combination of that with the goat fantastic I actually love the rice just with that side of curry sauce that's wonderful and then, of course, the goat makes it even better. There are few better ways to start off a day than with a hunk of goat. That was delicious. Uh, they serve good food here, and I don't know how you could not love these wooden booths and the green, like, rocky tile on the floor. This place is legendary, and they serve halal food right in Bangrak, right at the corner of Silom Road and Jalan Krung. And actually, we're just right across the intersection from Lebua State Tower where the famous Siroko Sky Bar is. I'm very happy with the start of this day. We just jumped into a taxi and we are on our way to Charan Sanitwong Soi Sam, uh, which is Soi 3. It is across the river and we are going to a place called Ban Silapin, which is also known as Bangkok's artist, artist house. And it's a kind of a cool neighborhood to just walk around. And it, it is a artistic kind of creative house with Thai, traditional Thai style. We got off the taxi at Charan Sanitwang Soi 3 and all the way at the end of the Soi, which is right where you enter the local community. So we are walking into the community now. And also I just wanted to mention that you could alternatively get here by renting a private uh, long tail boat or maybe even taking a tour. Um, but we got here by taxi and then we're just gonna walk in from here. We have arrived to the community, walking next to the canal now, and boats go past right on this canal, but it really has a pleasant feel to it here. It's nice and sleepy and relaxing, and now since it has become popu a popular place to visit, there are lots of cafes and some small restaurants around here where you can eat and sit down and just enjoy this old community in Bangkok, but I think one of the best things to do, we're, well, we're heading towards the famous artist's house, which is called Ban Silapin, uh, but I think really the best thing to do here is just to walk around, enjoy the views of the canals, and just, yeah, just enjoy this old community. <laughs> Ying found a friend. They have a coffee shop here at Ban Silapin, so it's time to have an iced coffee. But one of the best reasons to come here is for the Thai puppet performance. But they have recently changed the hours or the days that they do the performance. And so we actually came, we're on a day that they're not having the puppet performance, which is unfortunate. But I have been here a number of other times. We missed it today, so we're just enjoying this house. It's a great place to relax and hang out, have a coffee, and just very artistic and very old Thai style. I really like walking around this whole neighborhood, uh, this canal side neighborhood. We had no plans to take a boat, but then when we were buying coffee, there was a sign that was advertising for a long tail boat for 800 baht for an hour. And so we thought, now is a good time to take a boat. So we just called the boat driver. He's gonna pick us up 
and we are gonna take a little boat tour of the Klongs, which are the canals. So this should be fun. Our boat just came to pick us up and we have a huge boat all to ourselves. It's just Ying and I in the entire boat. So if any of you want to join us in the boat, we have a lot of extra seats waiting for you. Uh, but this is gonna be good. Oh, I can already feel that cool breeze coming off the canal. Uh, and seeing Bangkok by canal is one of the, the best ways to see Bangkok. The boat ride was fun and we actually decided to get off a little bit early uh, and not take the full tour because we came, we wanted to get dropped off and we got dropped off at a temple called Wat Kalayanamit and we are here now to just walk around and we're gonna go explore an area called Kudi Jin, which is home to the Santa Cruz Church, an old Portuguese church. We're just cutting into an alley and this area is called Kudi Jin. And right ahead of me is Soy Kudi Jin, but this is a Portuguese Thai community, uh, Christian community within Bangkok, and it's home. If we keep winding through these narrow alleys, like that one right behind me, uh, we will get to the famous Santa Cruz Church, which is a Portuguese church, and we're gonna go find it right now. I really highly enjoy walking around back alleys like this in Bangkok. Uh, one of my favorite things to do because it's so interesting and such a such a community feel and so many interesting things and I love the potted plants as well as the little stores all of a sudden you're just walking along through the neighborhood and you come up on a little convenience store a little family run convenience store and then you walk past the canal okay I'm gonna stand on the side of the alley as a, a cart rolls past We are walking and I just see the Santa Cruz church right ahead of me. That's where we're heading first to check out the church. Right behind me is Santa Cruz Church, which is a Catholic church and it really has some interesting history and a long history. It was built originally back in the 1700s and it has since been rebuilt, but it still remains intact today and it is a place that still holds services on Sundays and this is really a lesser explored area of Bangkok really nice and peaceful and you can walk inside check out the church and then you also just walk around the community but it's really calm it really feels kind of like a different city from bangkok here this pocket neighborhood community is known for a snack called kanom kudi jin which is a baked kind of cake and so this we're at a cafe now we just walked through the alley to a cafe and we are going to have some kanom kudi jin and maybe another cup of coffee would sound delicious right about now. I ordered another iced coffee, and then we also got the Kanom Kudi Jin. Uh, and we came outside to uh, make the video because they're playing some music inside, which is all right. But this is a really, really nice family, pleasant cafe. And in the back, they make this snack. Uh, and then they just have a kind of side business cafe here, but really small and really family run and they told us that they have been, uh, well, they've operated this kanom, this cake store here, or this making making the kanom kudi jean for five generations now. So it's been around for a long time. It has some real history to it. It looks pretty much kind of like a cupcake, but it is, it feels quite dense, and there is some sugar on the top of it, as well as maybe some raisins, I think. Okay, let's taste it. Hmm. It's a little bit dry and very crumbly. And it has that kind of that egg white meringue flavor to it, but at the same time, it's kind of like a sponge cake as well. And would go well with a cup of coffee. 
I'm not a huge desserts or cake eater myself, but Ying, my wife, enjoys it. And, but I do like the coffee and I love this, the, the whole atmosphere of these lanes and this community, coffee. It is looking pretty rainy outside, like it's about to storm. So we decided to jump into a taxi and we are on our way back to the hotel for a bit. We got back to the hotel and we spent about an hour back at the hotel. Now we are walking out to the road, gonna try to catch a bus. It has been two weeks on this trip to Bangkok so far and there's a dish which is probably the most well-known, most famous Thai dish outside of Thailand. A stir-fried noodle dish. You might know what I'm talking about and we haven't eaten it yet on this trip so hopefully that will change in a few minutes from now. We jumped on the bus. We are on bus number one and we are heading to Charon Krung, Soy 107 where hopefully there is a stall that we are gonna eat at. That was a little bit of a mission. We didn't know how far down 107, Soy 107 it was, so we decided to walk. And that was not the best idea. It's a pretty busy road and not a lot of space for walking. It's not, a, not too pedestrian friendly. But luckily the restaurant is open. Uh, this Pad Thai restaurant is only open from about 5.30 p.m. and they shut down and sell out by 8 p.m. And they're, I think they're only open on weekdays, not on weekends. And this is, and actually we even arrived here, it's only like 6.30. We have arrived here and they are already out of Pad Thai Gung Sot, which is the Pad Thai I wanted to eat with the fresh shrimp. So I have to get the one with dry shrimp. And we're waiting on our order right now. You can just see the smoke pouring from this corner of the road. That version of Pad Thai with the fresh shrimp, they actually just told us that you have to call them ahead at like 3 or 4 p.m. in the afternoon. And then the, they will come, they will start cooking at 5 p.m but usually by the time they start selling, they're already sold out of that version, which is very unfortunate. We didn't know that. So that's the story. My plate of Pad Thai has just arrived and this is Pad Thai Gung Hang. So it, was, it is with the dry shrimp, little dry shrimp. There's tofu in here, there's egg. Before I season anything, oh, look at that. And there's egg, there's chives in here. And I like how it's heavy on the, on the bean sprouts as well. Okay. That is awesome. Oh wow. Oh that's that's incredible. Oh that is so smoky. It actually is so smoky that it has a flavor that would like just before being burnt. It's that smoky. Oh man, and that makes it really good. The noodles are really sticky and not overcooked. And then you really get those crunchy freshness from those bean sprouts and I think I may have had a chive in there and a dry shrimp. Oh wow, but it's all about that smokiness. That is, oh that's a really good plate of Pad Thai. Going in with a squeeze of lime, and then a sprinkle of crushed peanuts, and then gotta go in for some chili flakes. That's a must. Okay, that should be good. And then give that a little Give that a little toss. I like to eat, this is called huopli, which is banana blossom flower. Okay, let me taste that now with that lime juice and that extra chili. I have to admit, that is a fine plate of pad thai. Mm. And then you can eat a few of the banana petals from the banana blossom. Mm. They're crispy and they're a little bit chalky. And I love all these fresh uh, bean sprouts and then also chasing each bite with a fresh chive as well. well. Just look at that egg. It's like, it's like almost burnt. Almost so close to being burnt. But that just gives it an unbelievable flavor. Oh, it's so good. That's really good, Pad Thai.
and then chase that with a chive. Mm. Mm. I really rarely ever eat Pad Thai when I'm in Thailand, uh, but I can definitely say that this is one of the best versions I've ever had. Really, really, almost unbelievably smoky flavor, and I really like the texture of the noodles as well. Um, pretty cool spot. It's definitely very off the beaten path, and I really wish I would have gotten to have the fresh shrimp version, uh, but that one sells out before they even open most of the time, so next time I'm gonna be sure to call ahead. Uh, yeah, this place is only open for three hours per night, so it's a little bit tricky to get here, and it's also, uh, yeah, they sell out really fast, so a little bit off the beaten path, but really good pad thai. I'm gonna end the video for today here, and we're just gonna head back to the hotel. So if you enjoyed this video, please remember to give it a thumbs up and also leave a comment below. And tomorrow we are gonna, actually it's gonna be the end of this Bangkok series. We're gonna check out of our hotel and go home, but I will be vlogging about it. So stay tuned for tomorrow, see you then.